How's everybody doing? We are on location in the UP of Michigan on the uh, Quinoa Peninsula. I think I spent, I think I pronounced that right. And behind these trees here, I don't know why I'm starting it here, is a uh, Grand Design Reflection Vintage 2016. And we've been hard at work on it. And by we, I guess I mean myself and our cat Chewy. And one of the customers, Gary, also was a big help. Uh, JD is on assignment on vacation with his family, and we're going to be meeting up here next week at a pretty fun event. Maybe we'll share a little bit from there. Uh, we're only, we're kind of putting a, I would call it a starter system in here. We're actually putting a pretty big battery and inverter system. Uh, two SOK batteries, we'll show those here in a minute. Uh, 3000 multiplus, all that stuff, but only three solar panels up top for 600 watts, which I don't know. Some of you might think is not a starter one to us. It kind of is. I think eventually they may end up upgrading, but we'll see where we're at. Let's take a look at what we've done so far. So, so far what we've done, we put our board together and we've just put that in here. You know, the 3000 multiplus, the MPPT 150 by 70, the, uh, the links, we got our LED cable in there, we got the servo, the shutoff, the fuse, the main solar, main fuse, all that stuff is in there ready to go. And there's this backer panel here that the customer already pulled off. And uh, what we did is we built our own board on a three quarter inch ply. And then uh, we're gonna cut that backer board down and make a removable panel here to access the batteries. So they're actually not gonna lose much storage in here or in the front bay. Actually, they're gonna gain a little bit in the front bay. So, um, for right now, actually, we're just trying to get a jump on charging these batteries because the solar system in the, in the uh, solar bus over there, that solar bus is pretty much full. And I ran the air conditioners last night for a while because it was kind of hot, but it's perfect today. So we're gonna make use of that power and charge up the batteries with a couple of just normal chargers just to at least get some amps in there. And we'll let the uh, solar finish it off either, uh, probably tomorrow sometime, but uh, that's kind of where we're at here. Let's take a look inside and I'll show you where we got the display mounted. Uh, it was a little tricky getting that in here, but this is where we ended up putting it. We uh, cut, we cut the slot here for this. We cut that a little bit bigger and then moved it up. Let's go a little wider. So normally this is positioned more in the middle of this. So we just slid it up a little bit and it made room to put this display. We were initially thinking of trying to put it here, but we weren't really sure exactly what was behind here with the pocket door and just everything going on. We opted just to put it right in here. And behind here is pretty easy to get at. There's just a false back. You can, uh, Pull this away we've done that before then all the wires available right there and then uh speaking of all that available wire our plan is to run the solar down there as well we should talk about that so the thing on on this grand design reflection is it's a little bit older not that that's a bad thing uh but there's no solar pre-wire for it so we're gonna have to figure that out ourselves and we're probably gonna have to come down that main channel and that's where there's a gray tag vent up there or a black tank rather. There it is right there. You can see the little shark fin. We're gonna go right next to it, I think. But first I'm gonna go up there and take that off just to verify that that is what we're looking at and we'll go from there. But all right, we're up here on the roof getting things ready and we successfully got the uh, solar wires ran. And something I wanted to point out here is kind of how close came to disaster, to tell you the truth. Um, these are a lot of important wires running right through here. And I couldn't actually, I lifted this cover up to see what was below it and I couldn't really get much more access. What I wanted to do is to try and pull this cover up and kind of nose around in there a little bit to see if there were any channels. but. We kind of went with our best guess uh, and put a hole right there because that's where the main channel is. And sure enough, let's see if we can get in there. There we go. Sure enough, there's some channels to run our wires through and we did, but I used this hole saw and 
as you can see, they had to get pretty close to the wires. So I would say if you're doing it on this uh, model or generation of Grand Designs, that's the hole, that's the place to go to for sure. But just be very careful. Be very careful. I mean, you should always be careful putting holes in something, but even more so. That's all I got on here. Uh, we're going to start getting some panels up here. We might even get it today yet because we still got some sunshine here. How many? Oh, I can't even see. It's too bright. And uh, anyway, it's just beautiful around here. Just beautiful. Well, here we are on the final morning. Hopefully, anyway, got our bus there. We are on location in the beautiful UP of Michigan. And uh, here's what we're working on, finishing up the solar. And we got a little surprise. The plan was to do three panels, but after looking at the situation, we went with a fourth. Uh, just because, well, one, we had one. I generally always, if I'm doing a location one, I try and bring at least an extra panel or two in case one is broken or who knows what might happen. I always try and be prepared. But just to, with the situation they got going on here, with all the trees and the shading and where they end up parking, we're just thinking more panels is better. And we're doing something a little bit different that we typically don't do, which is we're going to run all of these in parallel. Now, that's not a big deal uh, as far as the wire gauge is concerned. We're going to be at about 21 amps if this thing's running at full tilt, which it rarely will just because of where the panels are and the, where the shading is going to be. Uh, but if in that hypothetical situation, we'd be at 21 amps running through these wires, and these are good for 30. Although I try to somewhere in 20 to 25 is about as high as I would like to go. You always want to leave some headroom, in my opinion. Uh, but we can do that because these are the 24 volt variety of panels, which means they actually run at about at somewhere between 45 and about 38 volts is where they're going to run. And we like to use those for a couple of reasons, but I would say this is another reason we can parallel them all and still have a high PV voltage. If you had the 12 volt version of these panels, you're going to have to do series them all or not. You're going to have to do two series, two series to get, do the same thing. And then you've got less uh, partial shade performance out of it. So I think this is going to work well. Uh, as of this time, we are still, we're getting about 100 watts in is what we saw. And uh, yeah, we're starting to get some sun. It might poke out. Who knows? So, um, yeah. I'm going to get at this and get uh, get these panels taken, get taken care of. Get the wires sorted out got that roof roof port roof port roof how do we say it i don't know leave a comment down below and yeah and then we'll uh do a quick review of everything else we've done down below that's about wrapped up as well all right we got uh got everything all put together got it all wired up secured down got uh took a little little uh page out of jd's book here and what we've been doing lately is a little dab of die core on top of a zip tie, 3M uh, zip tie holder. Looks like this guy's coming up a little bit. But, because uh, otherwise the zip tie holders, they're not going to hold it very long. But the die core kind of turns into a semi-permanent glue and tends to hold it pretty well. So that 3M adhesive, its job is just to hold it long enough for the die core to start to set up. So I think uh, about to, we can put a bow on the top, that's for sure. Then uh, we'll go down, recap what we did there. All right, so here's everything we did inside. Got everything all mounted up, covers on. I forgot my sticker to put on there, so I'm just gonna have to imagine it in there. But we just got done load testing everything. Everything stayed nice and cool. We pushed uh, about 140 amps through it, so I feel good about that. The, uh, you can see where the batteries are mounted up. We got the fridge in there still. Customer wanted that left open in part for uh, the heat to move around and just good ventilation and access to it. So that's just fine with us. And ultimately, it's about what the customer wants and that makes us happy. So I think that'll wrap it up for this one. So if you need help with your camper or RV, 
bus conversion, whatever you got, give us a call or look us up at sodasolar.com. Thanks.